Hey guys, Darren Asbury here with Revital Outdoors, bringing you another exciting podcast. Tonight, we're going back to the great state of Oklahoma, my home state. We're going to talk to Mr. Gunnar West. Gunnar got a top five finish last year at the BFL Okie Division Tournament on the Arkansas River. That same tournament's coming up here in the next few weeks, so he's looking to defend his top five finish and then hopefully take home that uh, victory. So looking forward to talking to Gunnar tonight and a little bit more about the Arkansas River. Before we get started, Revital Outdoors is very, very excited to announce we are doing a $2,500 giveaway for anglers out there. This is a great opportunity for anglers to win a very awesome sweepstakes package. Real quick, I'm going to upload a QR code. Take your cell phone and scan this code. It's coming at you right now. Okay, thank you for scanning that code. Again, that puts you in for the drawing. That winner will be selected to the end of the year. And again, it's for $2,500. Also, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And then also, if you've never heard of Revital Outdoors, we're a premium CBD company. Our CBD products are THC-free, made right here in America. They're great for all the ailments that all the outdoor enthusiasts experience out in the field or out on the water. Great for uh, back discomfort, uh, knee issues. If you have any kind of discomfort with your joints, trouble sleeping at night, that's what our products are really great to do. So you can purchase them directly off our website. Again, that's revitaloutdoors.com. So that being said, let's go ahead and get right to the podcast from the great state of Oklahoma, Gunnar West. How are you doing this evening, bud? Oh, good. Yes, sir. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Well, Gunnar, I really appreciate you coming on board. I know you're kind of a younger generation angler, so it's always great to talk to kind of the uh, future of the sport. Uh, man, first and foremost, congratulations on your vict- on uh, your victories, but your uh, your success last year in the Arkansas River, um, there, that tournament series, the Okie Division BFL went there twice. You got top fives at both tournaments. Yes, so, man, sir. tell us a little bit more about the Ar- Arkansas River. What's so special about it? What do you like so much about it? Man, I, uh, I, I'm... I, I live 10 minutes from there from Applegate, which is, uh, you know, the current end of the pool. So I, I locked both tournaments. Uh, it's kind of a known deal. Most guys know that if, if you're going to the river in a BFL or a big tournament, it, it's going to end up being one in Kerr nine out of 10 times, I would say. Uh, and there's a lot of really, really good guys, um, um, on the Arkansas river. A lot of good guys that have a lot of backwaters, um, me personally, I don't, I don't run the really way back in the backwaters. It's, it's easy to tear stuff up, get stuff tore up. And, uh, man, what I like about the river is, is it's kind of one of them places that it separates a lot of people because not everyone's good there. You know, you go to the Grands and the Ten Killers, it's, it's anybody's. You can kind of get away from people. I don't necessarily fish community holes. I don't go jump into backwaters and everything like a lot of guys. But you can, you can get away from people. And uh, and not be around people twenty four seven. Okay, okay. You know, when I started fishing the BFL Oki Division, we always went to the river in the like slap heat of the summer. It was always between uh, June and August. It was ridiculously hot outside. Um, that being said, you know, last year you guys went to the river in the kind of more of the springtime of the uh, year. That's when you're going back this year. So explain a little bit how the river fishes in the springtime. How's it a little bit different? Is it better? Uh, and also, are you catching fish that have bloody tails? Or are you catching spawners? Man, uh, last year when we were there, I, I don't even remember the exact water temp. I know the first time we went, uh, I might have caught one or two that might have been thinking about it. But I, all everything I weighed in was pre-spawn. Uh, none of them were spawning. I know the difference in kind of the summer and spring for me is is it's not necessarily a grass deal like it is in the summer. In the summer, uh I fished grass and pretty strictly just grass. When we were there, the grass was dead. I still caught fish out of the grass, but uh, it goes from more, in my opinion, the summer. It's a frog bite, swim jig bite, flipping bite to we caught them on more of a chatterbait, spinnerbait, and I, and I caught them flipping. I uh, I weighed in everything I weighed in on a uh, on a 7.6 Daiwa heavy uh, flipping rod kage and 20-pound cigar, and then I caught them all on a 7.3 uh, medium heavy Daiwa and 20 pounds cigar again so i want to chatter bait down the bank i kind of like that fish and you get up there get close with them and and, and just kind of winch them in the boat and you ain't got to worry about fighting them around uh so both both times i was there in last year every fish i weighed in was on a chatter bait and a flipping bait okay so you're flipping and chatter bait you know you talked about a spinner bait and a chatter bait those are two very popular uh, baits on the river real quick i just want to kind of 
I want you to explain what, what the difference is. Like, when do you fish a chatterbait versus a spinnerbait? Because you kind of fish them in the same water, but are you just picking up one when the other one's not working, or how do you how do you look for different targets? Man, last year we were pre-fishing for the first one of the year, and uh, I was I was struggling bad. I could catch them flipping. I had a super good practice flipping, but you know how it is running through locks and having to lock twice. Uh, I, I would have liked to have found something I could I could move a little more water with if the flipping bite wasn't happening. And I threw a chatterbait for two days of practice and a spinnerbait and caught two fish on them. I just I couldn't make it happen. I never got a bite on a spinnerbait, caught two on a chatterbait. And then I just I got on a color thing. It was literally strictly color. They wouldn't, And I pulled up on a bank, and me and my dad were pre-fishing, and we pulled into a spot, and in literally 10 minutes had 18 pounds on it. It was just strictly a color on the chatterbait. And I like to throw on, I was throwing on rock and woods when I was throwing it on um, in the uh, in the carpool. Uh, and, and I was fishing kind of the, not steeper, they were honestly flatter banks with that chatterbait. And normally I like to throw that chatterbait kind of around the wood and stuff. You can get it down a little farther. And I like to throw a spinnerbait through the grass. That's just kind of, I'll throw that chatterbait through the grass most time, but, but anytime it's, early like that me and my yeah. dad have always just seemed to throw a chatterbait around that wood you can get it down and you can kind of reel it a little slower not it's, it's more in their face instead of above them okay okay so how many keeper bites did you get last year in the tournament i boy i called twice less than 10 less than 10 i caught i pulled in on my first spot and uh i think i caught four i ran to my second spot and i caught my fifth one and cold twice and that was the, that was the only ones that yeah if if i if i caught eight or nine keepers they were literally 14 inches okay so the ones i weighed in were the only good ones i caught other than that i didn't catch any good fish it was fishing brutal okay okay what do you predict for this year i know that the area has gotten a lot more rain this year um water is going to be high a little bit more uh, color in the water so what do you predict for this year man i'm gonna say god I wanted to say last year was behind, but anywhere I've been in the country this year, getting ready for the Toyota series and the BFLs, I think the fish are more behind this year than they were last year. And I'll, I'm going to go out and say the, I think it took 15 pounds to win last time. And I had somewhere around 12 and was third. The first time we went there, I, you're going to have to have somewhere 18, 19, 20 to win this time. And probably 14 plus to be in the top 10. I don't think the weights of, and I, I might be, off but i think they'll be biting a lot better this go around than they were last go around i don't know what was up with them but they weren't biting because on kerr which is where we went you know it always seems to get 10 keeper bites is pretty easy you pull up on one patch of grass and do that and i got 10 all day so i'm gonna say i'm gonna say the fishing will probably be better i've been on kerr a couple times this year uh jacking around looking at some stuff I was out there the other day and had 17 18 pounds and I, i'm looking at it'll probably take it'll probably take upwards of 18 plus to to be in the top top two or three okay okay what's so special about kerr i mean um is it water clarity is it more cover for the fish to relate to is it the grass um does it just hold a lot more fish uh, what Man. do you what do you think i mean you look at the history of the arkansas river between bassmaster opens toyota series has been there uh, the elite series was there one year uh, several years back B bfls every year there's always out of the top 10 there's always four guys that went to kerr yeah, like well, the last time the Open was there, Chris Jones won it in Kerr. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's always going to be one in Kerr. And, I, and I'm not going to say always. I'm going to say most times it's going to be one in Kerr. And I've always wondered that myself because I've I've had some really good tournaments and let, never left, you know, three forks Muskogee pool. And uh, I I don't know if it's the sheer number of fish or what it is. I think, I think on Kerr, if you look most of the time, it's a local that wins down there. And you, mm -hmm. you just kind of got to know Kerr to know Kerr. I mean, I caught them last year, not in community holes, but they weren't sneak holes. But you just kind of got to know how to fish the areas. And I think that's one reason it's always one in Kerr is because if you look at 140, 50 boats, on, I think 39 of us went to Kerr last year. Well, you're looking at 100 boats, you know, 5 or 10 will go up, whatever. But you're looking at over 80-plus boats in Muskogee Pool. And Muskogee Pool just doesn't fish that big to me. And so I think when you go to Kerr, you're fishing a you know a 40 boat tournament down there instead of 100. They're just not they don't get beat up as bad uh, in practice. Not as many people go down there, so I just don't think they're beat up when you get there. 
I got you. I got you. So, well, um, Gunner, you've given us a lot of great information about the Arkansas River. Again, congratulations on your finishes uh, last year. We're definitely going to be pulling for you for this year. Before we let you go, um, just any final thoughts, anybody that you want to give a shout out to? I know looking at your social media, you have a great family, a great support system. So anybody you'd like to give a shout out to before we get off here? Yeah, man. Uh, first and foremost, it's, it's got to be God, uh, my Lord and Savior. There ain't no doubt uh, the things that happened last year wouldn't happen with, with without that without him uh second's got to be my parents and my sisters uh they supported me when i'm like had awful practice they've been like hey you're good dad dad's never missed a tournament uh he's never missed a practice and he's been there at every one of us here at this one right now and then uh i'd like to thank yamaha skeeter diowa uh pro guide uh texoma tackle uh all, i couldn't do it without all the great sponsors and I'm, i left a few out I'm sure, and uh, man, I couldn't do it without all them. Santone, uh, man, Cigar. Without those guys, I couldn't do it. Um, they make it. They make it a lot more doable um, when you have a really good support crew. And I've got a crew behind me. Uh, I'm gonna say that's that's right there at the top with everybody else. Absolutely. So, well, Gunner, really appreciate you coming on our podcast. Again, for all the listeners out there, you've been talking to Mr. Gunner West from the state of Oklahoma. He got two top five finishes last year at the BFL Okie Division tournaments on the Arkansas River. Again, that tournament is coming up in the next few weeks. Gunner, we're going to be pulling for you and all the other anglers out there fishing the uh, BFL Okies div- division this year. We want to wish everyone safe times on the water. Um, everyone have a great luck as well. Don't forget, before you get off here, to go ahead and you saw the code before we started this podcast to scan to get into our $2,500 giveaway. That same link is right in the description. It's at the top of the description. So click that link, get in for that giveaway. And also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel before we get off here. As always, I'm Theron Asbury. Thank you for tuning into this podcast. From all of us at Revital Outdoors, be safe on the water. God bless. We'll talk to everyone very, very soon.